Hey guys, it's hey guys, it's Michael Pedone with SalesBuzz.com, and I got an email that talks about the two terrible sales questions and what to ask instead. And I want to go over these with you real quick because here's here's the first question. First of all, the, the, I actually agree this is a horrible sales question here. It says, "If I could show you a way to improve your business, would you be interested?" Okay, now why is this a horrible sales question? Well, first things first, we need to back up for a second. Before we can answer that, we have to ask ourselves, where in the sales process are we asking this type of question? And this type of question, when being used, is almost always used in the opening value statement, right? They're trying to, they're trying to use it to get the prospect to to have a conversation with them, right? That's supposed to be the goal, or at least to get them interested to hear what they have to say. So, so here's one of the main reasons why. There's, there's two main reasons why this is a bad sales question, okay? The first one is this, is it's a manipulative sales question because it's it's forcing the prospect, and they know this, so prospects are smart enough, they can, they can tell this is being a manipulative sales question, and when you ask manipulative sales questions, does their guard go up or down? Does their trust level go up or down? Right. The guard goes up. Trust level goes down. So it, it, you're starting off in, in a bad scenario and you're trying to use it to to manipulate them to say, well, yes, I would. But let's say they even do say yes. Right. If they say yes, you just put yourself as a salesperson in a bad situation because now you're forced to do a data dump. You're forced to go ahead and and tell them what you do and what you offer. And they're not going to care until you rec until they're not going to care until they recognize that they even have a problem. Like you're, you're, you're jumping ahead to a solution of what you offer. They never agreed that they had a problem that your solution solves. So you're, you're, you're skipping a bunch of steps. You're, you're putting yourself in a presentation situation where you have to do a data dump and it's just not good. So their trust level goes down, their guard goes up, and you put yourself in a bad spot uh, by having to go ahead and, and now you have to explain what it is that you offer. Okay, so that's the, that's the first question. So we agree. That's a horrible sales question. I would never ask that. I wouldn't ask that. Okay. The second one is this is what keeps you up at night? I hate this question. It's a pet peeve of mine. Uh, it's a, another, I think a lot of prospects can sense that it's a manipulative question because it's now the reason why I'm saying that is this, where are you supposed to ask this question? For those of you that were taught to ask this, where, where are you supposed to ask it? And what was the purpose of asking this question? The purpose of asking this question is to try to find a pain point, a buying motive, or a hot button, correct? You're trying to find something that really keeps them up at night, and you're hoping that they give an answer that you solve. This is a, this is a bad st sales strategy, okay? So when you ask what keeps you up at night, first of all, anytime somebody asks me that, I, I know why they're asking. They're, trying, they're ho hoping that I'll just cough up a pain point or a hot button, and then they're just going to pounce on it and then try to go ahead and, and tell me about a solution. And the problem is, is that there's no sincerity in there of them trying to want to help me solve a problem, right? They're trying to manipulate me into saying what my problem is. There's a much better way in doing it. And the other thing too is where do you ask this question? Again, this is going to be once you peak interest and gain permission to continue the call with your proper opening opening value statement, because that's what an opening value statement is supposed to do. It's supposed to peak interest, gain permission to continue the call. So when you peak interest and now they hand you permission to continue the call, you can ask them some questions that will, when you when you know that you ask them the right questions, you get to the pain point. You're going to ask better, smarter questions that'll uncover problems that they have and then you're going to have a much better sales conversation this is called this to me this is why i you know I, I preach sales engagement you have to understand every time you pick up the phone sales is a lot like baseball every time you pick up the phone you have to imagine yourself in the batter's box okay and your job is to get to first base first that's your number one goal to get to first base first, even if you hit a double or, or a home run or even a grand slam, you still have to touch each base in order. If you hit a double, you cannot run from first base, run across the pitcher's mound to second base. If you do, you're going to get tagged out. Sales is the same way. The reason why a lot of salespeople aren't hitting their numbers is they're skipping steps in the sales process. And what's worse, most of them are skipping steps they don't even know exist. They don't even know they're skipping steps. OK, so when you're asking these two types of questions, they are going to put you in bad positions right out of the gate. Now, what do, where is the problem that I have with this article right here? So they point out two horrible sales questions, which I agree. These are horrible sales questions. And what do they do? They come down here and say, instead of asking these generic questions, dive deeper. OK, what does that mean? Dive deeper into what?
See, you understand, I've, I've been a straight commission sales rep for, for longer than I care to remember. I say oh, more than 30 years now, okay? And getting sales advice like this is never helpful. It just creates more confusion because it's not being specific. Instead of asking generic questions, dive deeper. Show you, show you know the industry by asking questions that are relevant to their world. Okay, well, what kind of questions in their industry should I be asking just to show them I know their world? This doesn't make any sense. And it's not going to be helpful if you're I guarantee you, if you're struggling to hit your quota right now, right, and that phone is getting really heavy, you come across this article and you read this. There's nothing here to help you to get better. And now the next part is and show you care by asking follow up questions and actively listening. Listen, people don't care that you care. They want to know, can you help them make their lives better before, you know, better than what it was before you called them? That's how you make them care. And to do that, you have to know what problems they would have to have in order for them to be interested in your solution. You have to understand, instead of just going, uh, instead of just diving deeper and, and, and asking questions about their industry to show them that you know that, that, that um, you're familiar with their world, instead, you need a more detailed game plan that will go ahead and ask questions that will engage the prospect. There's, there's a real simple way to do this here, right? So this, the sales buzz flow chart makes it re really easy. Right. So step one, level one, however you want to call it, getting to first base. We have to peak interest, gain permission, continue the call. I actually have a free course on my website. It'll take you less than a lunch period to go through the whole thing uh, where it'll actually show you how to custom create for free. It'll actually show you how to custom create a winning opening value statement that will do this for you. And you'll be able to start making better sales call before the end of the day today after you take that class. Right. And again, it's free. You just go ahead and write online, sign up for it, take it, and you'll see how it works. And then you'll be able to create your own. Uh, opening value statement that'll peak interest and get them to, to willing to have a conversation with you. But once that happens, now what? That's when the real that's when the real sales skills need to kick into place. Getting a prospect on the phone, willing to talk to you, is the easy part. It's once they say, "Yeah, I got a second, go ahead." That you're like, "Uh, what do I do next?" And so you have to understand. So you you get to first base, you're in the opener. The next thing is to, is you're in the qualifying phase, and there's three phases to qualifying. So the first phase is listen. Remember this here has said, you know. Uh, show you know the industry by asking questions that are relevant to the world and show you care by asking follow-up questions and actively listening. This, this is all garbage advice in my opinion here, okay? Whoops, sorry about that. Let's get back over here. And, and the reason why I say that is this, is because if you really want to show them that you care, you have to ask questions and identify a problem. And you can't call and tell your prospect yet that they have a problem because they're going to doubt it. So the best way to get them to recognize a problem is to ask a couple of questions. And based on their answers, they will get to see if a problem exists. And so how do you do that? Well, you start with an engagement question and then your opportunity size question, then your pain point question. Right. And, and then now now things start to come unraveled. And once you learn how to do this in a very conversational way, yes, this is where your questions are going to be industry specific, but pain point problem specific. That kind of detail, rather than just saying ask questions that dive deeper and show you know the industry by asking questions that are relevant to their world, doesn't help a struggling sales rep. You need to know exactly what questions to ask. What is the purpose of the question to ask? See, the purpose of each question in a sales process is the same no matter what industry you're in. The questions will change based on the industry, but the 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 purpose of each one is the same. Just like baseball, going from first to second to third to home plate again is the same process, no matter how you get there, right? So what is important to understand is when you peak interest and gain permission to the call, the very next thing you have to do is you have to get problem recognition. Well, you can't tell them that they have a problem because they're going to doubt it. So how are you going to get them to recognize a problem? You have to ask questions. Okay. And instead of saying, well, what keeps you up at night, which is going to be manipulative, put their guard up and, and lower the trust in you. You're going to ask what's called an engagement question, an entrance point question that puts their prospects attention in an area you want them thinking about. And then you just follow this process right here. That'll help. Again, these are things I can get into deeper on how to do those, but that's my two cents on these two questions here on um, you know, two terrible sales questions. I agree, they're terrible sales questions. The problem was I didn't like that they, they, they take time to explain the two terrible questions and they give you two sentences uh, or three sentences on, on what you should do instead and it's just way too generic. So I hope this video helps solve that for you. All right, take care.